Welcome to a brand new series that we're calling Real Men Wear Shorts, Guns of the African Bush Wars. Now, if you're going to talk about the African Bush Wars, whether it was the Rhodesian Bush War or the South African Bush War, there is one gun that you absolutely must discuss and you need to talk about it first. And that's this one right here, the FNFAL also known as the right arm of the free world. Let's talk a little bit about the history of the FN FAL. Now, FN stands for Fabrique Nationale, the Belgian firearms maker. And FAL is French. It stands for Fusil Automatique Leguerre, or Light Automatic Rifle. Now, this uh, weapon, this rifle, they started building it and designing it in the late 40s into the early 50s, and it was officially released in 1953. Now what was going on in 1953? We were in the very beginning or the early stages of the Cold War. That's right, the United States and their European or Western European allies versus whom? The Soviet Union, right? And for the most part, Communist China. So we had a Cold War going on and we had this organization called NATO the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And what did NATO adopt in the early 50s as their official infantry rifle cartridge? Well, they adopted the 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO. You probably know it as the 308. That became the official infantry cartridge until later on when they switched to 5.56. So many companies in the world were fielding or producing rifles to chamber that round. Now there may be people who will argue with me, some of you M14 lovers out there, but we can safely say that when it comes to the 762 by 51 NATO, that this is probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular, battle rifles chambered in that cartridge. Now, after FN designed the what they called the FAL, several other countries and companies started making licensed replicas. That's where we got a lot of name confusion. So the original gun, FAL, right? But the Austrians started making what? They started making the STG 58, which looked like this. The Brits started making the L1A1, or just the SLR, or the L1, which looked just like this. The Canadians started making the C1A1, looked just like this. Ah, and the South Africans started producing the R1, which looked just like this rifle. Now this rifle that's in my hands right now was actually produced by DS Arms right here in the good old USA. And it is a faithful production. This is the Bush Warrior, the SA-58 Bush Warrior. And this is about as close as you're going to get to what the Rhodesians and the South Africans were using back in the 60s and 70s during the Bush War. We've got a polymer forend. We've got a polymer stock and pistol grip. We've got your typical 20 round metric magazine. And for those of you who are curious, yes, this is a metric gun, not an imperial or an inch pattern gun. This is a metric gun. It does have the carrying handle. Many of you say, aha, but Paul, during the Bush War, the Rhodesians and the South Africans, they would clip those off. Yes, they would. Quite often they would clip them off. What else is on this gun that makes it unique? Well, we have an original uh, muzzle device right up here a bush style muzzle device. Right back here, what I have is I have a grenade launching sight because back in the Cold War, in the early 50s, what were they still doing? They were still actually using rifle grenades 
yes they were still using rifle grenades way back then and so this is a gas block and what it does when you put the sight up it turns off the gas to the action so that nearly 100 percent of the gas is going out of the muzzle because what are you doing you're shooting a grenade with a blank cartridge with the gas right and if you don't want that well you just collapse it and put it back to normal uh, the gun has a standard style fn fal safety mag release uh, bolt release charging handle all that stuff like i said this is a very and even the sights the rear sight which is adjustable for windage and elevation then you have your front sight up here so this is a very very faithful replica of the original gun as a matter of fact it even has the r1 south african sterilization hole now this was done custom for me and the grenade sight was done custom for me so if you go to ds arms website <laughs> don't get angry at them and say hey i want the hole punched in mine and i want the grenade sight okay this was done just for this video series and just for me uh, what am I wearing? I'm wearing a very traditional style Rhodesian chest rig. I've got the brush stroke hat and the brush stroke shirt. Got myself a bandolier right here of 762. This is actually a Cold War era bandolier of 762 NATO ammunition. And on the side, I've got myself a socket style FN bayonet. And yes, it does affix right there directly to the end and it has vents so you can vent the gas out while you're shooting so ladies and gentlemen this rifle the fn fal yes it was used in europe in northern ireland it was used in central and south america i get that but probably the most famous battles that this rifle ever fought was the african bush wars and it became known as the right arm of the free world.